All right, I wanted to give a, a quick preview here of the Coastal Classic Tournament and these holes. I'll go through my notes. I've, I've kind of gone through my notes and I have a little bit and I've gone through my videos and the deal is I don't have a lot of these holes on video. So it was in the, in the first anniversary tournament. I was playing in Masters at that time, so I have no idea. I know I didn't have, was, wasn't taking any videos in the 4th of July tournament from 2018. The Cinco de Mayo and the Desert Trim were all in the summer of 2018, and I was deployed. I played all of those tournaments in the, I think there's like five or six tournaments that these holes that are in this have been in, and I haven't finished outside of the top three in any of those tournaments. So I played these holes really, really well. I just don't have any videos in them. And when I was deployed, I don't have my notes for that period. So I only have like some of the older notes. So I'm gonna go through and just walk through what I have. And I did, I think I have like three, three of the holes I've got videos for and they're pretty decent videos on them. And then the other holes, um, once I do some more scouting and I get my initial notes, then I'll post another video and then we'll get into the first qualifiers practice round, next Monday's practice round. So on this hole right here, I do know that there's several ways to play it. The traditional way is going to be to do a bounce out over here and try and bring your ball into this area. I can tell you that if you don't end, if you end up in the rough or the sand anywhere on this side right here, um, probably even close up into this, you're sunk unless you brought a Nirvana in, and you'd probably have to be right here on the tip. And I can't remember if you can make it if there's like a little spot out here, but pretty much if you go towards the left and you end up in a spot of bother, you're in some trouble. And they typically give us, they typically give us a win that we can use and we have to use that win. So if you're playing from the pro tees or you're playing an expert, it's a tricky shot to get up there. There is another shot that's on this hole where you can bring it around and you can do you can do curl and try and lay yourself up out here. Now, if you're coming out to this area right here, this would be option A if you're taking the shot to the right, where you're laying up out here. If you're a direct line to the green, you know, you're gonna need something with some backspin, and there is a wind adjustment here. You gotta be careful. There's a rough bump that you can do down here on that little teeny spit of rough right there. There's a rough bump you can do, and it is dangerous because there's a wind adjustment that needs to happen here so depending on which way the wind's blowing you know if we get on this hole and the wind on the second shot is blowing this way then coming out to here into this area is better because the wind's going to be blowing with us so when we take that shot to the green it's going to be a little easier to adjust for the wind if the wind is blowing like this so when we take our drive shot we're shooting in a side wind and we end up out here. Now we've got the wind going with us here. So that may determine which side we go to. The, the problem with this side over here is that if you get into trouble on this side, you're in trouble. If you come up up here and you overshoot or you, you there's ways to get on, you can recover from here, but you can't recover from there. So typically I like to go to the right and try and get and try and get now what I do so we have shot a which is to lay up out here and then try and come in best serve with backspin clubs or come way out here with like a sniper and this would be a guardian shot or if you got lucky a Saturn shot and come up into this area right here if you're if you don't like doing the backspin stuff or you're not getting the wind adjustment right you could start way off to the side and you could use side spin and curl to bring the ball back onto the hole back onto the green um, the other way to go is you can set up somewhere along, you know, when you originally put your ball guide out, you're going to be somewhere along this, this transitional area, somewhere up in here, or right along this transitional area here. We'll have to practice this once we get out there. And you can do a max overpower hook shot where you land out in this area and you run up. Now your goal is to get caught in the rough and roll out of the rough and just end up on this. It's a super, okay, it's a super small window. But if you can land on the other side, which doesn't happen very often. You're on with a long iron and you're, and you got a really decent shot. If you get caught up in the rough right here and you have a Nirvana, it's super easy to get on. You can come over here or you can do the layup shot. I'm not sure if a Houdini would have enough distance. So if you came on this hole and you brought a Houdini, or not a Houdini, excuse me, a machete, whether a machete would have enough distance to get up here so you could do the rough bump or really try and go at it. I'm not sure if it has enough distance or not. We'll have to try that out. Um, 
but typically on this hole, this this is this is a makeable Albi. And this was when the game first started off. This was in you know this was a hole that we played a lot, and and Albies have many Albies have happened on this hole, so it is Albiable. And your shot from out here is typically a very clean shot coming in. So if you can get out here, if you can survive the drive and not get in trouble out here and end up out in the fairway, you got a really good shot coming in. If you end up out here, but if, like I said, if you end up in trouble, you're in trouble. You're done. You're not going to get an eagle. But if you end up out here, and even if you're in trouble, you can make it on. So I typically like to go for the shot to the right. And then it's always the big question of whether do I lay up and then really try and go at it, or do I go for it with the max over hook and try and end up on this spot? Typically, in one-on-one -on -one play, I almost always go for it because I I know that if I get up here, I got a super good shot. But I'm I'm always out here, and a lot of times my opponents will fail, get caught up, and this is a guaranteed get on the green and two, get your birdie and go home, or get your eagle and go home. So I typically play the max over power hook shot, but I think in the tournament I'm I'm gonna explore maybe doing the layup shot and just stopping right here, but it'll be some, it'll be somewhere on the right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the shot on the right because the shot on the left is a pretty standard shot. Now if you're playing in the upper divisions and the wind's blowing in the wrong direction, where the wind's blowing in this way, I mean we typically don't get a headwind here. We typically get some type of forward moving wind. It may be fairly flat like this. Okay. or it may be like this you know it'll just depend so with the wind that we have we have to use the wind and it's one of those deals that it's it's at such an angle when we're on this hole that it's usually really hard to even if we use the wind to work the wind in and be able to get through this neck without getting in trouble so a lot of people are going to end up in trouble on this hole there's going to be people that get albies but there's going to be more people that get in trouble and if I come out over to this side right here, I'm pretty much guaranteed an eagle every time. Um, I'd have to do something really extraordinary not to get an eagle if I come out to the right. So I'm going to work on the shot to the right. Hole number two, but I don't have a video for this one up. Hole number two. I, I'm not sure I have a video for this one up either. Okay, this right here is an optical illusion. <laughs> The greenskeepers are really pissed that they have to maintain all of that because that is not existent. It looks, when you're on the tee box, because it's straight in front of you, it looks like, wow, you know, I get my ball out here and then I've got this great shot coming in. It doesn't work out like that all the time. And the deal is, is that it, it's a hoppity hop. It's a weird, it, it's a, it looks, even right here, just like looking at it, I'm like, why aren't we taking that shot? It, it's it does not look as good when you're out there and the shot is is not your chances of, of getting um, an eagle on this are are less on the right hand side the place to be is right here because then you have a straight in shot to it and this is an eagle of a hole and you need to go right at it so when I came out in the past I've used a QB and a Titan Q gets me to QB gets me to right here so that I can bounce over and I can roll up to the front. It's super important that we don't overshoot this. So no more than two topspin if you're using a QB, if, especially if it's an upper level. If it's a lower level, it, it the distance thing will be there. But if you've got an upper developed QB, no more than two. What it wants to do is when it bounces over from this spot right here to this spot, it takes a flat hop. So it comes from here. And it comes over and it takes this flat hop where it hits a hillside right at the right point and it shoots out and it just runs flat across the green. And when it shoots out and it runs flat across the green, it picks up speed and it'll roll off onto the rough. So if you use any more than, you know, even the shot that I'm taking here, about two, sometimes it would catch that. But if I put on like just a titch less than two, I could usually end up out here. And, and you don't want to end up here, but anywhere up here in the front, anywhere in that circle is in the range. So it's better to be on the fairway and have the shot going in for the Albi than to end up in the rough because you, you won't be able to make it. You can't make that from the rough. You can get out into this area here and try and run it up and then have to take a short chip or a pitch, but we don't want to do that. We want to be on it too. We want to go for that eagle. Uh, my second shot is going to be with a sniper. And when I do the shot to the green, 
in the video I talked about using a 10% wind adjustment but in the video I I didn't do the 10% wind adjustment and I got it in the hole so we'll have to work on that as the week goes on but I'm definitely going to the right with a QB or excuse me the left with a QB and then coming in with a sniper you can explore this out here and see and try it and see what I'm talking about but this is not as good an eagle shot as this one okay hole number three hole number three okay how many tournaments has this been in the 2018 summer major and I won this in two different accounts and I remembered this hole distinctly but I don't remember how to play it and I know that once again optical illusions the stuff out here doesn't exist <laughs> And I know I was trying to come in at it pretty pretty tight to the green. Let's see what hole. Let's see here. So I wrote down any notes for it. So we got hole three. I'm using a sniper and a marlin. And I know because this is like we're way up here and here's the green down here. It's so far downhill to get to this spot that when you try and scroll down in on your rings to really make a good wind adjustment, you can't get you can't get down on it because it's so far down the hill already. And I think we're going to make somewhere between a 40 and a 60% wind adjustment. It's going to be huge. So start with 50 and see where you're at because it's going to make a difference. If you want to be up here on this or if you want to be back here on this or it'll make a difference if you're if you're in an elevated spot, it'll make a difference on that wind adjustment could be different depending on where you're at. If you're up here close, you may be, you know, it may be where the green's like this and there's a little teeny bit of a slope. So if you're up here close, you may be deeper in the hole. So, you know, the difference between this spot and this spot right here, there's a height difference. So this wind adjustment, what you use may be different if you're back here further. I'm going to try and find a spot where I can wedge my rings up. Like I'm going to try and put like my white ring up against the the fairway in the fringe and then my white ring out here. I'm going to find some spot where I can come to this hole and set my ball guide up very quickly just put it in that spot and then I can make my wind adjustment or make my ball adjustment and then dial it and then do the fine tuning little dial it into the hole and then I can make my wind adjustment to try and speed up time so when we're on these holes sometimes it's hard because we're we're trying to adjust the ball and we're trying to find that spot but if I can set myself up immediately right in a very close spot to where I'm gonna be then it's gonna you know any seconds that it saves me if you watch my videos you see I'm down to the nitty-gritty on every shot so <laughs> I don't have a lot of time to waste when I'm on the course so if I can wedge myself up and, and I'll be more consistent so on this hole right here I know I'm gonna start off my beginning notes are gonna start off with a sniper and a marlin and we'll see where it goes from there and I'll probably have to change that marlin I'll either have to change that marlin to a low wind ball that's got three side spin a zero power ball that's got three side spin one of the season 11 or season 7400 or Santa balls Oceana you know one of those types of balls and that might be the ticket but I don't in all my accounts I don't have those balls so what I may end up having to do is switch to a one power ball so I can get a quasar so that I can get some side spin but I'll have to we'll have to work on red line distances when this hole comes out so what you want to work on with the when you get on this hole is find out like with different balls like if you catch this in one-on-one -on -one play don't worry about you know see where the red lines are at if you've got a marlin your red your minimum red lines here and your maximum red lines here I mean where are your red lines what all what are your ball options you know if your red line for your if your maximum red line for your marlins right there and you want to be in that spot and you've got room to maneuver you know that the number is pretty close to max so it's a little bit easier than if like here was mid and you were somewhere in between so picking the right ball so that you're where you want to be at in your club so the numbers are a little more consistent so you can really start to dial it in all right hole number four this is a par four my notes say QB or rock. Oh my gosh. A level eight rock. Okay. In my 77 count, I've been working on trying to get a maxed out rock. And I'm sure some of you went, hey, a maxed out rock sucks just as bad as a level eight rock. And I've got an apocalypse or I've got a level eight extra mile or I've got a level 10 QB. I will tell you, this hole right here, this hole right here 
is why I want a maxed out rock. Because when this hole comes up in tournaments, if you can get an eagle on this hole every time you come to it, or give yourself the most serious shot at eagle that you can possibly get, this hole right here will win you tournaments. And this hole right here is is was custom made for rock. Now, I've seen people hit over to this island, and I am never going to do that, ever. I will never demo this shot for you, <laughs> ever. And here's why, because if you hit out here, all you're doing is guaranteeing yourself either a short iron or a long iron shot. That's it. That's it. You have no shot of getting on the green. You have no shot of getting in your wedge. You have no shot of, of improving your lie. You're either going to be in a short iron or a long iron shot. Now, if the wind is blowing this direction, then at least when you're out here for that shot, you've got the wind to, to your back. But if the wind's blowing in this direction, and you're still hitting out here. Now, not only have you relegated yourself to a short and a long range shot, but now you're hitting sideways. Okay. Now, if I hit out here and I'm in my my wedge with a crosswind, I will take a wedge with a crosswind over a long iron with a tailwind because I think my odds are better with my wedge. So, with a rock or with a with a with a high level QB, you can get out in this range now. There is a little bit of a wind adjustment here. Let me see which hole we're on here. Which hole are we on? Let's make sure I got, I'm looking at the right note. So I'm going to do a 10% wind adjustment down this hole. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to try and curl the ball to get it to come in this direction. And what it's going to do is it's going to come a little high up the hill, and then it's going to roll back down. So if you watch my videos on a regular basis, I get down into a hole like this. Here's my yellow ring. And here's my orange ring and I'm always my orange ring off of this transition I'm never closer than two rings to a transitional area whether that transitional area be up here in the front or whether that transitional area be somewhere else where I'm in the back where it's in the back I try and always leave myself two rings of maneuver because when I hit this shot if I hit it great to the left that's great to the left Somewhere between the outside of that ring and the middle of that ring is great to the left. Somewhere between the in middle of that ring and the outside of that ring is great to the right. So if I hit a great to the right, I'm inside of a great to the right. So that means I can hit a great to the right, which is not what I wanted to hit. And I can still get past this point and move over. I hit a great to the left, I can still move over. But if I've got my ball set up where I've got my yellow ring here, everything to the right is now in trouble. Everything to the left is still clear. So if I hit a, a perfect or a great to the left, I'm good. But if I hit a great to the right right here, I am dead. If I moved my ball over like I did up here, and I moved it over just one more ring so I gave myself some room, this great to the left at the end of the run is not diminished. It's still in the area. The perfect is still in the area. Now the right is still in the area. So why wouldn't I give myself more room? I mean, this is like one of the basic things about setting up a shot. Now, I kind of have my own personal rule. And here's my orange ring, or yellow ring. Here's my orange ring, and here's my blue ring. And when I'm doing curl, I like to be no closer than two and a half to any transitional surface. Sometimes three, depending on how much curl I'm gonna put on it. So in this shot right here, I'm gonna set this shot up so that I'm somewhere between two and a half and three rings off of this transitional surface. And I'm probably not going to be able to dig down to the hole as much as I want, but I'm going to bring the biggest, baddest ball that's got the most amount of side spin. Because top spin is, we're not going to be able to put on all of the top spin. So we're going to be able to put on all of the side spin. So I'm definitely going to bring a three side spin ball. So that puts it in either the katana or the kingmaker range. Because there isn't anything in the game that has four side spin. And if there was, I'd be using it on this hole. So once I set the ball up down in that area, so that I'm in this area, and my ball guide's gonna be showing me going out, here, let's pull it back so we can see where the tee box is. My ball guide's gonna be showing me going out like this. Okay, and I've got my ball, so everything that I move, like when I was talking about, I, I always give myself room for maneuver. Every one of those rings, I push it out. I'm pushing it further out into this area. Okay, that's why I'm saying we can't put on a whole lot of topspin. 
but we're going to put on all of the side spin and let's say we're facing out into this area we're going to put on all the side spin and the side spin is going to get us facing in this area so i'm going to have to make up this difference right here with curl so the more curl that you have on your club the better and a maxed out rock a level eight rock has 100 percent curl it's the only one of the woods that has and so for this type of deal it hits in its distance range it hits here's a quarterback here's an extra mile a rock hits right dead center in the middle I maxed out and it has a hundred percent curl and it's a hundred percent accurate so there's a lot of shots that I take with my quarterback that my rock a level eight rock would actually be a better shot at if you're trying to get distance as far as topspin and stuff the quarterback's usually better because it has more topspin even though it has less distance but that's if you're going in a straight line so the you know and it could be argued but the rock in on this particular hole right here that hundred percent curl will get you into sometimes even mid wedge where you're just doing a hop where you're just doing the half a cup is four miles per hour wind and it's super easy and you can't quite get that close with a QB but you can get with a QB you can get into your minimum short iron or your maximum rate or wedge so when you come to this hole you definitely want to know what your minimum short iron you want to know all your short iron numbers and you want to know all of your wedge numbers and so you're going to come into this hole I'm going to be about 2.5 rings off and I'm going to put on maximum curl and try and bring it to the hole I'm pretty sure it's probably only going to take maybe two maybe three top spin you know that's probably the most that you'll be able to put on it but you want to bring a big enough ball here that you don't have to use overpower on this you don't want to have the variance of I I put on a little bit too much overpower and when you get over here then it rolls off into this rough sand area or I didn't put on quite enough overpower and it ends up clipping something so it's best if you can come to a hole like this because we have so many things going on we're putting on maximum side spin maximum curl We've got a wind adjustment that we have to make down here, a 10% wind adjustment. Um, we have all this stuff going on. The last thing we want to do is complicate that with overpower. So try and bring as big a ball as you have. And I believe I do have a video of this one up. All right, on this hole, this hole's been redesigned several times. And one of the redesigns that I like on it, some of what they, here, here's what it looked like originally. There was a tree over here and there was this tree was not there. Or this tree that is right here actually came up over here and there was no tree blocking this. Because it used to, because this tree is kind of in the way. The island used to be a, a viable spot. There is another shot that you can do on this where you can come in here and do a rough bump and there's a wind adjustment. So you need to know what that wind adjustment is. And I have no idea because I don't take that shot. But you can do it. I've, I've done that shot before because I've had an opponent that failed back here. And so I just came over and shot directly into the sand so I could win. Because I'm when, I, when you're out there and you're trying to win chess and you're trying to win coins, if your opponent makes a mistake, you need, to, you need to throw the hammer down. So if my opponent came over to here and ended up in the rough, I'm not going to try this shot. I'm not going to try whatever I was going to do. I'm going to come over here and hit it directly into the sand and make myself shorter to the pin when my coins get my chest and go to the next hole if they end up in the drink I'm gonna literally dribble it off from the tee box so that I land right here in the sand and take my win and go home if your opponent makes a mistake in one-on-one -on -one, throw the hammer down so on this hole right here you can bring you and it'll be preference whatever your favorite long iron is but for me it's either gonna be a sat Saturn or a backbone one of those two so if you're looking for accuracy backbone if you're looking for utility Saturn I'm really comfortable with my Saturn I play with it all the time and once again this is one of those spots where it doesn't matter to me which way the winds blowing I'm gonna be two and a half rings off of this transitional surface because I'm having to put curl on it to bring it to the hole and anytime I engage curl I like to be two and a half rings off of any transitional surface that way if I hit a great on the inside it's still gonna land on the fairway and bounce over um, this is only going to take, let's see what hole, make sure I'm on the right hole here before I start reading my notes. Saturn backbone, um, one top spin, probably max. 
you're going to be looking like you're facing out and out into this direction right here and you're only going to put just a little teeny bit of top back or top spin on it just enough so that when it gets out here it'll kind of roll up and come back to the hole maximum left hand side spin maximum curl that's how i'm going to go at it and then i'll continue to work a spot but i'm going to be working this spot down here to make sure that i set up in a very consistent spot so any changes that i make over here are i can i can see what that change is because i wasn't I wasn't here la I wasn't here last time and then I was here the next time and here the next time and here the next time. I want to make sure that I find a spot out there where I can be in the same spot every time. Every time. Every time. Now another change that they made on this hole, one of the things I hated this hole is because here's the flag. There was a there was a hilltop up here and if you were right there only like 4 yards away it was the flag pulse here and it came up this hill and around the little deal and it was a dangerous putt just being four yards away and it was super hard to end up on this plateau i mean you had to get it all right so that you could end up coming up high enough to land on the plateau instead of just riding along the edge of it and ending up low <coughs> i did find in the old days that the island was a pretty good way in the lower in the rookie but not in expert and masters because the wind was too high <clears throat> but they flattened that out so the green now is flat with this area so if you miss on the inside down here a little low the putt is just a standard putt it's not some tricky little putt it was kind of unfair before but I've seen holes in the real world that were like what this one was so I'm going to come out this with a long iron backbone or Saturn about two and a half rings off about one top spin max maximum side spin maximum curl trying to bring it towards the hole all right, hole number six. Um, I have no idea. I can't remember. I do know that this way right here, once again, is an optical illusion. Now, maybe in the upper divisions, they have to use this spot out here. Okay, and if you draw an arc, we're in our long iron or wood range out here. So if you draw the arc going around the course, right? You'd have to be up in here to be in the same long iron spot you're here in, or wood spot that you're in here. And that's a long shot. So if you end up out in here, you're going to have to bounce off this island, try and bounce it over and try and run it up. Or you're going to have to try and bring it in. This shot out here to the right is an optical illusion. In order to get to the point where you'd have the same similar distance, you'd have to get all up all the way up in here. So while it looks easy because you've got this big fairway, the deal is, is the only part of that fairway that's useful to you is this part down here on the other side of this sand. <laughs> and we're going in this direction. So that's not necessarily a good thing. Whereas here, we can go in a straight line to the spot that we want to be in. Ideally, I want to bring an accurate club here. I have no idea what I'm, what I'm going to need to bring. If you've got lower developed clubs, I know you're probably going to want to bring a big dog as your second club. Because you're not going to, if you end up short down here, you're going to need as much distance. This is not a hole for a white ball. It's a par 5 to start off with. Okay. This is not a hole for a white ball. This is a ball, this is a hole for one of your big balls. This is why you save your big balls during the week and don't play with them in one-on-one. -on -one. Would you rather go out and win 300 coins because you brought out a Titan? Or would you rather have that Titan to play on this hole right here in a tournament? I'm raising my hand for the, let's play it on the tournament. Okay. This is why we save our good stuff. This is why when we get those balls and we and we get a top 10 or a top 20 and we win those balls, we hoard them for the next tournament. So the next tournament, when we get to a hole like this, we don't have to, you know, we've got some balls. We saved them. If I can use my accurate stuff, my goal is to get out into this area. I have no idea what it's going to take. I have no idea whether I can start here with a QB and then work my way on or if I have to start here and then bounce here and then roll over. I have no idea. But I am definitely going to bring a QB. I'm going to work out whatever I have to do to use my Acura stuff because, I mean, look at what's going on down there. So if you draw a line from the tee box, okay, this is a straight shot. So it's not one of those shots where, like this shot, if you were taking this shot right here, you're trying to go from the right to the left. So everything on this shot right here moves to the left if you were trying to dig down into that hole. So I would start way off over here on the right-hand side, and I would put maximum side spin, maximum curl, and I would try and bring the ball like this. And it doesn't matter if I hit the ball great to the left out here. Second it hits, it's going to roll in that direction. This shot right here is a straight shot. 
So anything you do is straightforward. If you make a mistake and it's to the left, you're going to go to the left. And you may make this bounce, but as soon as you get done with that bounce, you're off in the, off in the weeds or the sand or the rough. You hit a great shot on the inside here. You may make this shot. You may even make the second shot, but you're going to end up in trouble out here. So if we bring accurate clubs, we can afford, if we bring an extra mile, we can't afford to make any mistake. It better be perfect or you're going to be in, you could be in trouble. Whereas if you bring a QB or a rock, you can hit a great to the left or the right. And that's the same as a perfect on, a, on an extra mile. So you have a much better shot of getting out into this area. With this type of shot coming in here, I remember that this green is like sloped like this and it's on the face of a hill. So it's like this where the, you know, the pins here and it's got a lot of movement to it. And it is difficult to get in there. So I'll, for this distance of a shot, um, this is not, in my opinion, going to be a great shot for a guardian because a guardian's only got a couple top spin. And you're going to really, and, it, and it's ball guide's good, but it's not great. So you're not going to be able to really work your way to the hole. A big dog doesn't have ball guide either, so you're not going to be able to work your way to the hole. But if you've got lower developed clubs or if you find yourself short back here and you've got to tighten, you'll have a shot to get on with a big dog because it has tons of top spins and tons of power. If you've got upper developed clubs or if you're 100% confident you'll end up in the spot every time, then I'm gonna, I would bring a sniper. And that's what I'm going to bring. I'm going to find myself the spot here where I can lay up in that spot, that spot, that spot, that spot, and then I can practice the sniper shot over and over and over. I don't want to end up here and then end up here and have to practice the shot from there and end up here and have to practice. I want to end up in the same spot so when the weekend round comes, I've taken that same shot over and over and over and over and over again. Accurate stuff, for sure. I have no idea how I'm going to play it, but it's definitely going to bring accurate stuff. All right, all number seven. What do we got? Part three. All right, I do have a video for this one up. And I got a sniper and a katana is what I used in the video. Now, I am not interested in this hill face. There's a couple par threes out there called the racetrack par threes. I'm not sure which where they're in. But they're the ones where you hit the ball and it curls around and rolls back down. Or you, you know, you've got that big racetrack stuff. I see a lot of people trying to use this as a racetrack. I am not interested in creating a new racetrack hole. <laughs> There's a hill right there. I'm not using that hill. And here's one of the reasons why. Here's a hill. You're aiming for this spot because you're trying to hit that spot and you're going to get it to roll over and it's all going to be perfect. And you hit a great, you hit it perfect. And it hits right here and it rolls and it does its thing. What happens when you hit a great to the left? You hit a far, farther up on the hill. You hit a farther up on the hill and it's going to want to take a bounce going this way. Or you hit a great to the right and you hit it down here and now it wants to take a bounce where it's rolling out this way. And so you can end up with a great to the left or the right that puts you way great to the left or the right. I mean, in this situation, a great to the left, there's a really good chance you're going to end up in the rough because you're using that hill face and you hit it at the wrong angle. So I'm not going to, I don't like engaging those hill faces unless I absolutely have to. Even on those racetrack holes, I play one of them totally, I don't play it on the racetrack side. I play it on the other side. I, I don't like hitting those because if you hit in the wrong spot, your trajectory is going to be totally wrong. If you look here, look at the, look at the course right here. There is a hollow right there. There's a depression in the course. And at the very bottom of that depression, it's absolutely flat. I mean, it's flat right there at the bottom, and it's and it's pretty flat coming up to the up to it. So if you hit a great to the left or the right, and you're in this depression, you're still going to stay in a pretty pretty flat trajectory, exactly like you tied it in. You may be on the inside, you may be on the outside, and perfect is right towards the middle. So I want to be in that flat area. I came at this with a sniper and a katana. So the katana put me where I was like right where I wanted to be. That was mid club. And in this tournament, I'm going to play that at about 1.2 to 1.3 per ring. On this particular hole, I put on 5 backspin in the shot. And I put on 2.5 right side spin. So <clears throat> what I'm going to be looking for, I'll go back and watch that video again. What I'm going to be looking for is where I lined up along this transition. Like did I have half my blue ring up on this transition? Where was I? That I have a ring that was up here by the... I'm going to try and find two portions of my ball guide that are in a landmark. 
so that I can come back to this hole and line it up in that spot. I can put my white ring up against the thing and my blue ring here, whatever it happens to be. I can line it up in that spot. I can put on five backspin, two and a half right hand side spin, and then I can make the fine tune adjustment to dial it into the hole and take the shot. And my goal is going to be to hit perfect so that if I hit perfect and I end up on the inside of the hole, I can look at how the wind is blowing and I can, I can diagnose that shot to see like, did I need to add on more wind or do I need to take off some wind? And I can start to dial that shot in. If I end up on the outside of the hole, I'll do the same thing. I'll look at, I'll diagnose what I did here. But that's why it's really important to hit perfect because you can't make adjustments. You can't make those type of adjustments unless you hit perfect. What you can do to make adjustments if you're not hitting perfect is you can do distance adjust adjustments. Like I went too far. So I need, to t I need to add on like maybe one more backspin. But I think five backspin to start off with is gonna be great. But I'm gonna be looking down here. I'll go back and watch that video and, and see where I was at down in this area. This is definitely a hole in one of a hole. It's not like, it's not a high percentage hole in one hole, but you can, you can get a hole in one on that hole. And it can be worked out so that you can do it a little bit better. All right, this hole right here. I have no idea. This was in the, and, and I'll tell you, I, when this hole was in the tournament, in the summer major, I played the summer major with my practice account and with my main account, and I won in both counts. This was not one of the holes that I picked up stuff on, but I picked up stuff on, I mean, I was burning it up. But the last time, the last two times I played this hole, I found out some stuff about this hole. I, I, I learned something about this hole, and I'm, I actually, I, I can't wait to get this hole and play because it hasn't been in a tournament since the summer major. So it's been over a year since this is in a tournament. And then it was a brand new hole at that time. So we've got very little practice on this hole. Is that during that, that tournament, we were trying to hit up here in the front, and you definitely need backspin clubs. So you definitely need a thorn, or you need a claw, or you need some kind of a backspin club. And the more backspin, the merrier. And the club that I was using at the time, which I'm not, I can't remember if it was a thorn in that account, but it was you almost need, you, you really need as close to 100% backspin as you can possibly get. And the last few times I played it, what I did was instead of trying to lay it up up there in the front of that fairway area, and it's difficult to try and bridge the gap because it's at the very end of your run. So you have very little control of the, of the end of your ball with a drive when it's at the very end of your run. The mistakes are the things you did right on the first and second bounce have already played in and at that point you're just a spectator and so it's really hard to get it up on that shot but what I did the last two times I played this was I hit it into the rough because my machete has a hundred percent backspin and I was finding that my thorn and I believe it was a thorn or it might have been a Saturn one of them doesn't have a hundred percent backspin and I really needed a hundred percent and so it was better to actually shoot it into my machete range than to lay it up out there. And so it seems, if I remember correctly, when we're up here, unless we're like right up against the edge or we've got a huge ball, like a four power ball, we're probably going to be in our short iron or our long iron range. And your Saturn doesn't have 100% backspin. I mean, it has a ton of backspin. It's a great club. But in this particular circumstance, it doesn't work as well because it doesn't have 100 and what I figured out there at the end was is that, you know, I've, I really can't get it in with my Saturn because it doesn't have 100. It's very tricky because what you have to do in order to try and get it in is you have to use this hill face. So the green's like this, and then there's this, or there's this hill face right here. And so in order to get far enough back to be able to get your backspin to go, you have to use this hill face where you hit a little bit right here and it, so it shortens it up. If you hit a little bit long, it goes whoa long. You hit a little bit short, it goes straight up in the air and comes back into the rough and the sand. <laughs> and I don't normally like to engage hill faces. If you watch my videos on a regular basis, I'm not a big fan of hitting into those hill faces because of that reason. So what I found was that instead of using my Saturn, I could just hit it into the rough out here, which was a super easy shot. <laughs> and I could go at it with a 100% backspin club. And the only thing is, is I had to hit it perfect. 
and I had to hit it perfect anyways. It's just the needle was going a little bit faster. So I'm not sure how I'm going to play this, but I'm going to definitely come out here. I, I, I know for a fact that I'm going to, this is going to be one of those few times that the game gets me to move off of my usual suspects. I'm definitely switching to a Houdini. I'm definitely switching to a machete. I'm going to bring the highest backspin clubs that I have. So I'm going to bring a guardian, even though I won't be in my guardian range here, I don't believe. But if something goes wrong, I'm going to make sure that every single club in my bag is a backspin club. And our goal is really to hit out into this area, explore hitting onto this island to see what the deal is. But I'm not going to be afraid of hitting into this rough because I actually think the rough might be, this might be one of the few holes in the game where your best shot at picking up the eagle is hitting it into the rough because that club has more backspin than the, than the club that you would normally be hitting out from over here. All right. That was hole number eight. Let's go to hole number nine. All right. Okay, I, once again, this hole's only been in one tournament. So it's been over a year since we played it, and it was a brand new hole then. So if you play in the normal tour that, tour that has this in there, then you know all about it. But if you played on a rookie, I don't think we have access to this hole. And I haven't played it since the summer major of last year, so... I know that there is a max overpower, overpower shot that you can do where you can land out here and you can get up. Or you can land on this island and be that close. And that's from... I'm not sure if the pros can do it with the wind that they have, but I know expert and master, there's a way to get on a one. And it's from this direction. Okay. In rookie, we may be able to get onto this island, but it's going to be one of those shots that sometimes you end up on that island, sometimes you don't. However, if you've got a Nirvana and a Spitfire, you may be able to make it on from down here. So there may be no risk in trying it. The reward is is that if you land on here, you got a great shot coming in. The risk is is that you may end up in the rough or the sand and you have to recover and move on. But I'm not sure if you can make it from here. And if you get caught up, if you get caught up anywhere down here, any further back, you're definitely in trouble. I remember playing this hole out to this area right here, and I can't remember if I was playing. I believe that I was playing with with my accurate bag. I was playing with a QB a Titan and a and a sniper and I'm trying to come where I'm setting up a little bit more to the left and I'm trying to come out here and I'm trying to fill this gap in between this island and typically you'll roll out I think where I was rolling out was right in this area right here so I was in a pretty straight shot to the green I actually didn't want to dig down into that hole too deep where I'm coming out was you could take the risk of clipping this there is a distance thing here so I mean if you're out too far you know your wood range is about somewhere in that neighborhood so you know depending on your ball you may be able to be out in this neighborhood and still be in wood range but you get much beyond that now you're now you're hitting back here where you're just trying to get on the green instead of actually going for an albie so I think what I was doing was coming right up here to the tip and there was the risk of clipping that tip and then it would just roll down about mid fairway and then I had this nice clean shot coming in with a sniper. This hole is albatrossable. So on this hole right here, I'm definitely gonna try, I'm gonna bring a QB and I think I'm gonna, I think a Titan will get it done. And I'm not sure about this, from this spot right here to this spot down here, it's, it is elevated. So that means we are gonna make some kind of a wind adjustment. But what I want to do is come in here and shoot it a couple times and hit a couple perfects and see myself being off before I start making the wind adjustment. I want to see what a normal shot would do with just a max wind adjustment and, and see if I'm off. Like see where I'm at in my club when I'm, when I'm coming down here because I'm assuming we're probably going to be pretty close to max club. But see where I'm at in my club, make sure I'm not in mid or min and see where I'm at. Make a max wind adjustment and then see where I'm off. So if I'm off on one side, I can look at it and go, well, hey, if I would have made a mid number, would that have helped? Or if I would have made a minimum number, would that have helped? And, I will, and I'll start working on that as the week goes on. But I'm definitely going to try once again to take accurate stuff 
because I want to, I'm at the end of a run and I want to end up in a very specific area and I can get that done a lot better with my Acura bag. But I may have to bring an extra mile here, but I believe I was using a QB the last time I was here, but it took a big ball. All right, let's go back and go through these holes real quick. This should be a birdie. That's minus one. Let's write that down. There's one. With an eagle opportunity. This is a par four. Wait a second. This should be an eagle. Excuse me. This should be a minus two. This par four should be a birdie. That's minus one. This should be a birdie. This hole right here should be a birdie. This hole right here should be a birdie. This par five should be a eagle. Birdie. Birdie. Eagle. Birdie, birdie, eagle. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Minus twelve should be the minimum score that we're looking for. So when you're going into these rounds and you're practicing, your whole goal, your whole initial goal is to get minus 12. Like every time you get out here, like you just come out and you got your eyes closed and you're half awake and you're drinking your first cup of coffee in the morning and you just come out and you fire off around and it's minus 12. And what you'll find is, is that you went, hey, this is the spot because I can come in with my guardian and I got the wind figured out and I hit this spot 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 and every single time you take that same shot. And since you're taking that same shot over and over again, basically, you set yourself up kind of like for a par three and you're going for that par three and you're working the math and you're working the math and you're going to get closer and closer and closer, giving you a much better shot to get in. Okay, But the whole goal on this is to get a minus one. But if you put yourself in the perfect spot while you're there, why don't you go for that minus two? <laughs> now, if you find yourself out here in the rough, I'm not worried about minus two. I'm worried about getting over here, rolling onto the green, getting my putt, moving on to the next hole. I got my minus one. That's what I was after. Okay, so if you find yourself in a little bit of trouble, don't continue to go for it. Get on the green, get your birdie, go, get your eagle, go to the next hole. These par fours, all three of these par fours, we have shots, but we have got to put ourselves in the right spot. And then we're going to have a wood shot to go in. Wood shots are, are not the easiest to get to go in on these par fours. So there's one par four with, an e with a wood. It's the next par four. And this par four right here is our best shot, I think. If we can get on this par four right here and end up out here in our minimum short or maximum wedge, that's going to give us our best shot to get in. In the last few times we've been here, the wind has been blowing in this direction. So that makes this shot down here even trickier because you have a much better shot of getting into this rough. Plus with all the curl and all the stuff that we have to put on it, everything's going in that direction. You make any mistakes in that direction, you got a big chance of ending up in the rough. But this hole right here is our best shot to pick one up. This is the hole all week long you want to focus on. You really want to know your short iron numbers and your wedge numbers. These par threes are all gettable. Okay, this par five right here, once again, wood shot going in. That's another gettable par three. This shot right here is probably our second best chance to get an eagle. And once again, it's going to be know your numbers for your long iron, your short iron. I'm going to explore going into the rough because I actually think that with my clubs, the rough shot might be the best shot because it just boils down to hitting it perfect at that point. It's pretty easy to set it up where you're at in the club. So if you hit it perfect, you gave yourself a pretty good shot. But the two par fours, what is that, hole number two? Hole number three? Must be four. Four and eight. <coughs> Excuse me. Four and eight are the ones that we really want to focus on this week. Four and eight. We can note on my, on my notes. So those are two shots, and we have shot. We have shots. This is another wood shot into the green. So the three par fives. If you want to get Alvy, you're going to have to hit them with woods. 
And if you can work it out so that you can bring in your most accurate wood, sniper. Easiest wood to make wind adjustments, sniper. Now if you're playing with a 13.5 wind, yes, you will have to move two full ring sets and then 3.5 rings. But you'll be much more accurate than if you moved your big dog or your one of the clubs that, that's at two per ring where you only have to move it half as much but you'll be a lot more accurate with that with that 100% accurate club so all those wood shot, all those par fives are wood shots going in so those are those are makeable but you know if we're really wanting to pick up shots so if we look at a minus 12 as being the the deal that means in the in the weekend round we're looking at minus 24 as being the average so somebody shoots a minus 26, they picked up a couple shots. Um, if they picked up, if they picked up four and eight on the front and four and eight on the back, that's four shots. That puts them in instead of 24 at 28. So 28 is going to be like a max score. But you really only need to pick up one or two here or there to really change your real estate. But focus on playing the 24 to start off with and if you give yourself if you put yourself in the perfect spot go for that shot if you don't make it go to the next hole try and put yourself in the perfect spot go for that shot and what you'll find is is that you'll start to you'll get on a on a streak and some of those shots will go in if you don't put yourself in the spot you have a little bit of difficulty you didn't achieve everything that you wanted to on that shot that's not a big deal but at that point, you're not playing conservative because sometimes when you play conservative, you actually make bigger mistakes. You're not playing conservative, but you're not going at it to the point where you're risking your shot anymore. Your goal now is to get on the green and get your birdie, get your eagle, whatever it is you were supposed to get. Go to the next hole. All right, that was a little bit of a preview of the Coastal Classic. I'll post, I will go through all my notes and I'll set up a week, so I'll set up a set of notes so that I can go into Monday's qualifying round and I'll post those as soon as I get them done. It'll probably be on Sunday. Um, hopefully everybody has some good practice. This golf class says, or Playdemic says, that you're going to be able to practice these in Tour 4 and 5 if you're in the rookie divisions. And so we'll see whether or not I played some Tour 4 last night and they weren't in there last night. So we'll see if they're in there today. All right. Have a great day. Hopefully you guys have a great tournament. Thanks for watching.